Hello, Lacey. Question. Have you ever worried that someone was lying about rape? Every All the time. It ruins people's lives. Every single time a woman comes forward about having been abused by a beloved movie star, musician, TV star, YouTubers, that star's fans immediately accuse her of lying. Because when it comes to stuff like this, you have to keep an open mind and be skeptical. There are men's groups online that- and What are the name of these groups? That claim that women lie about rape 90% of the time. I'm sure there are people that believe that women are lying 90% of the time. A sheriff in Idaho very recently claimed that they don't need a better system for rape kits which collect evidence because most victims are liars. The majority of our our rapes that are called in are actual consensual sex. Uh, but you see, Lacey, he didn't say they were liars. He was just saying they found to be consensual sex. And I mean, look, couldn't you or me or anybody in the world just make up a rape for attention? To get revenge out of jealousy, as Toby Turner's mom posted on Facebook? Yeah, you could totally do that. But would you do that? It's not a case of whether I would do that, Lacey, but it is a case of people do do that. And how often does that actually happen? The FBI states that between 2 and 8% of rape reports are false. I've been through this document numerous times and nowhere does it state that it is 2 to 8% false. Nobody knows the correct number or true number of how many false or how many rape reports are false. That is a statistical grey area. We just do not know. Anyone who claims that they do know are lying. Which is actually a low number in the crime world. Other crimes, like say theft, they hover around 10% false reports. And even that 2 to 8% statistic is deceptive. It includes reports where someone accidentally identified the wrong person, reports that are thrown out because of inconsistent details, but it is a well known fact amongst victimologists that trauma affects your memory. As does waiting many, many years to tell the police. I suggest going to the police straight away. And that 2 to 8% includes survivors who recanted. Someone could take it back because they were lying, sure, but much more commonly, they take it back because they're being pressured to take it back. Then that's more of a reason to go to the police. That's called in tampering with a witness. That is against the law. They'll go down for twice as long. Or because they've decided they'd rather just not deal with it. So what does this mean? It means that malicious, actually false reports and allegations are pretty rare. Uh, you see, Lacey, we don't know how rare. They may be more common than you think. We just do not know. And yet, doubting someone, calling them a liar when they come forward, is extremely common. I agree. And doing that needs to stop. But, on the other hand, we shouldn't just automatically believe people. Many of the reasons why we're inclined to doubt someone revolve around rape myths, myths about victims, and myths about gender. For one, most perpetrators aren't greasy, creepy guys who hang out in the shadows. They're just regular people in our lives. When fans, friends, family, co-workers find out that someone that they know and love did something terrible, allegedly did something terrible, it can be really hard to grapple with and accept, and instead, they choose to deny it. That halo effect around a perpetrator can be so strong that you can have cases like Cosby's where nearly 60 women come forward and report, and people still don't believe that anything happened. And that would be skepticism. It's all well and good coming forward, but 30 years after the fact... Sometimes the perpetrator even goes so far as to say, I didn't do it. They're lying. It's because, God forbid, someone who wants to defend themselves and defend their name, makes a rebuttal to that claim. This affirms people who don't want to believe that the sexual assault happened. There are a lot of people, particularly in the states, who believe that in order for a rape to be real, you have to have reported it. And in order for that report to be true, a court must convict them as guilty. Ah, uh, but you see, that's where good old-fashioned, innocent until proven guilty comes into effect. Unless you are proven to be guilty, then the claims are unstantiated. Now, in reality, about 68% of victims of sexual crimes don't report. And, and how do you know that number to be true? It could literally be 1% of people who are raped don't come forward. No one knows the exact number. And if you are claiming that you do, then you are lying. Only 2% of rapists ever see a day. That's 2% of proven rapists, Lacey. Not rapists in general in jail. Does that mean that 98% of people are just lying? No, it means that our courts aren't arbiters of truth and they're not always adequately equipped to handle sexual crimes. Then who is Lacey? You? Because I doubt that you have the uh, law knowledge to understand and go through what constitutes as actual rape or not. Then there are myths about how a real victim would act. In reality, there's no one response to sexual assault. Different people handle it in lots of different ways. Take me for instance. 
I saw help when I was raped by a woman, may I add, Lacey. And do you know who I sought help from? People like you, feminists. And do you know exactly what happened with that, Lacey? I got laughed at, told that I wanted it because I'm a man, and that I, if I didn't want it, I wouldn't have got an erection. Another myth when it comes to men is the belief that men can't actually be raped. Men want sex all the time. He had an erection. He was into it. But an erection is not consent. I'm glad you agree, Lacey. An erection does not equal consent. But the rape you're talking about is being penetrated by another man, I probably imagine. Whereas most men are raped by women. And increased blood flow can be a fight or flight response. Lastly, one of the sneakiest and I think most pervasive reasons why people don't believe survivors is that most survivors are women. There are many sub- That's simply false, Lacey. We don't know how many men are believed, if any. I know I wasn't. Under law here in the UK, I don't count as a rape case. I don't. Conscious, sexist beliefs that we learn all throughout our lives that come in and inform our opinions. That women lie a lot, we're not trustworthy, we're manipulative. You know, bitches be crazy. Bitches do be crazy, as you put it, Lacey. I know many women who have lied about being hit by their partners when they've been hit, who have lied about being raped when they were the ones who sexually assaulted the man. Bitches, or women, do be crazy. Those attitudes and biases within ourselves go unchecked, they absolutely do real damage. But wait, what if it really is actually truly, really, truly false? False reports are illegal, and they're typically taken pretty seriously. Citation needed. I've never heard of a woman going to jail for falsely accusing a man. There may be some out there, but it's rarer than you think. Seriously, when they surface, it's really, really important to talk about them because ultimately, in this fight, we're fighting for justice for everyone. So we need to pay attention in the rare moments that this happens to address them, to better understand them. And we do a whole lot of talking about false reports, which is why we also need to talk about the reality that sexual assault accounts are nearly always true. As I said at the beginning of the video, no one knows how much of it's true. So you stating that accounts are nearly always true is false and you are lying. How we more readily believe someone who says they've been robbed than they've been raped. Tell me. But you see, Lacey, if someone claims that they've been ro uh, robbed and then a later found to have that said item on them, then the accused will not go to prison. Whereas if someone is fa accuses someone of raping someone, in more times out of ten he'll go to jail. Men are far more likely to be sexually assaulted than to be- I hate to sound like Tilda twice in one pitch uh, video, but citation needed. There's no proof for your claim. Falsely accused. How it's far more common that a survivor is convinced to back down by the public, friends, family, even the police. Again, Lacey, citation needed. Even the police when something horrible did happen. We need to talk about how widespread myths and disbelief protect abusers and allow them to keep on abusing others. But so does listen and believe. If you didn't know this, putting in a false rape accu accusation is abuse, Lacey. It is one of the highest standards of abuse. It's abusing your power. If false reports are something that worries you, know that statistically you're on the side of reason and justice and truth to believe someone who comes. Citation needed, Lacey. There are countless thousands of men in prison who are there innocently. Back in days of lynching, you were more likely to get a guy killed if he was black than you were actually likely to be raped. Comes forward. We need to be willing to face the truth, to approach justice honestly. We can't do that by citing a rhetoric, listen and believe. There are going to be women who abuse this power. There's no doubt about it. Even when the perpetrator is someone that we know and love. So to April Fletcher and any survivor who finds the strength to come forward on YouTube or beyond, I believe you. Does that mean you believe me then, Lacey? Because in this video, I've just come forward. And one day I hope that the world does too. Goodbye Lacey.